today the title of my message is The Blood That Speaks Better Things. The Blood That Speaks Better Things. Yesterday, the Christian community all over the world uh, was reminiscing about the trial and the crucifixion as well as the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, when we read the scripture, we find that the day following the crucifixion, in other words, the day following Good Friday, is uh, the day when all things went into a silent gear. Amen. Nothing much Amen. is said about this day or about what was happening on that uh, Saturday after Jesus was crucified, Amen. when his body was still lying in the grave, uh, except that it was uh, the Sabbath day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nothing more is said. But nevertheless, although... Uh, the world and every other thing went into a silent mode. Uh, there was still a sound that uh, was not silenced. Amen. There was still a sound. There was still a voice. A voice that came from the blood of Jesus, Amen. which was shed on the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This blood of Jesus started speaking uh, after he said, it is finished. Hallelujah. And uh, it is still speaking today. Hallelujah. It is not only uh, speaking normal or general things, but it is always speaking better things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today I'm going to be speaking about the blood that speaks better things. Did you know that there is a way in which your blood and um, my blood uh, would speak? I remember that about two months ago, I went for what I normally do every six months. Every six months, I go for a medical general check up because when you are my age i'm about 70 now uh, you you need a confirmation <laughs> hallelujah so uh, whenever i would go for a general medical checkup one of the requirements the things they would require is that um, i would uh, supply them with uh, the blood results. So I would go and they would withdraw the blood and um, uh, those that are knowledgeable in dissecting the blood would read what the blood is saying. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So last time when I went uh, my results were already there. And, uh, but on that day I had a touch of uh, flu. I was shivering a little bit. And then uh, the doctor looked at me, uh, took my ECG, uh, checked my lungs, and uh, also made me ride on a bicycle and uh, extinguish some uh, candles in a computer. You know, technology. <laughs> Uh, can do wonders. <laughs> and uh, initially I thought 
I would just extinguish them just like that. But I realize to extinguish even four is a, quite a huge effort. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But uh, at the end, then he said, uh, uh, you are well, uh, Pastor Mashobo. And uh, I said, uh, tell me about the condition of my heart. He said, this blood says all is well. I said, uh, tell me about um, uh, my uh, sugar levels. He said, all is well. I said, tell me about my kidneys. He said, the blood says all is well. Uh, I said, uh, tell me about um, my blood uh, 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 temperature, do I have high blood or what? He said, I have said to you, your blood says all is well. And he, she even wrote down, all is well. But then I said to her, what is strange about what you're saying to me, that all is well, is that I don't feel well. I have a touch of flu. I don't feel yeah. well. Yeah. He said, Pastor, don't worry yeah. about this feeling. It's a mild cold. Yeah. You are well. I've just given you a clean bill of health yeah. because of what your blood told me. Yeah. And uh, he said, I can assure you, it doesn't lie. So those that are in the medical profession would know what I mean yeah. when I say the blood speaks. Amen. But uh, unlike the blood of Jesus, yeah. sometimes when you go for checkup, your blood will not give you the good news. Yeah. Uh, after the diagnosis and everything, yeah. the blood may give you the news that you never expected. Uh, when you come out of the surgery, you may be downhearted because uh, you receive saddening news. Hallelujah. But the blood that I'm talking about, whenever you come under this blood, uh, it will always give you better than any other news that you have heard. That is why I've titled my message, The Blood That Speaks Better Things. Hallelujah. But the text that I have just read to you from Hebrews chapter 12, the author of this text is drawing our attention to the fact that his audience yeah. that uh, he was uh, addressing had come to the new Mount Zion. Hallelujah. And uh, he colorfully characterizes this new Mount Zion. Just mark that qualification. He doesn't just say Mount Zion. But he qualifies it. He says, new Mount Zion. And then he goes on to make a comparison between this new Mount Zion and Mount Sinai. Hallelujah. In other words, he's comparing two uh, mountains. Uh, one is a geographic, tangible, material mountain. In the second one is a spiritual one. Now we all know that the children of Israel reached Mount Sinai at the beginning of the third month after they left Egypt. In other words, as they began the third month, they reached Mount Sinai. Hallelujah. At that mountain, it was for the first time that uh, the entire nation 
had a close proximity encounter with God. When they crossed the river, the Red Sea, uh, it was not so close. When uh, they drank from the rock water, it was not so close. When uh, they defeated the Amalekites, it was not so close. But when they reached uh, Mount Zion, it was very, very close. Listen to what the writer of Hebrews uh, says about this place that uh, the children of Israel reached. He says at least seven things. The first things he says about that place, he says it was a place that was untouchable. It was a place that was untouchable. A, a place that not even an animal would touch it. Hallelujah. Although they were very close, and yet they were far, in the sense that they could not touch it. Hallelujah. Secondly, he talks about how the place was characterized by blazing fire. The blazing fire. That's why I said they came so close uh, to God. Uh, maybe Moses uh, had a second experience. Uh, the first one was when he saw the burning bush. Uh, when the fire uh, showed up. But this time around, yeah. it was extraordinary. But thirdly, it was a place of gloom. Amen. It was a place of depression. Yeah. Uh, because when the children of Israel were in that close proximity, they were gripped with fear and phobia. Hallelujah. And uh, what made them fear is that number four, it was a place of violent storms. Our text talked about violent tempest. But number five, it was a place where the sound of a trumpet was audible. Although there was no worshiper, like we saw worshippers today. But somebody sounded a trumpet. Yeah, in the midst of the fire, in the midst of the tempest, there was a trumpet which was audible. And then uh, number six, it was an unbearable place. So unbearable to the extent that even Moses was gripped with fear to such an extent that he uttered the words, I tremble with fear. This is what our text says us. I tremble with uh, fear. And uh, of course it was a place where animals could also not come so close. So this was uh, Mount Sinai. Hallelujah. The children of Israel came very close to the presence of the Lord and yet it was a presence they couldn't handle. Hallelujah. But now let's turn to the new Mount Zion. When the author of Hebrews talks about the new Mount Zion, he makes a clear distinction because Mount Zion and Mount Sion are not synonyms. Uh, currently, uh, there is a place called Mount Zion. It is a geographic hill in uh, Jerusalem. It is just outside the walls of the old city uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, when you visit the Holy Land, you will most probably be introduced to that uh, place. The current geographic Mount Zion uh, 
is uh, where people go and it is known as the Temple Mount. When you go there, you're going to the Temple Mount. In Arabic, it is uh, known as Al-Haram Al-Sharif. Uh, so when you visit Jerusalem and you come to that uh, Temple Mount, you have not yet reached the new Mount Zion. You are still on planet Earth. Amen. Hallelujah. You are still on planet Earth. And I know when uh, we visit uh, uh, the Holy Land, uh, many people, especially when we come to the River Jordan, uh, what do you think they want to do? Uh, to be baptized. Uh, even though they are baptized. You, you ask them, uh, were you not baptized? Uh, yeah, I was baptized, but I want to be baptized where Jesus uh, was baptized. But we always say, but the water of the earthly Jordan and the water uh, in Canada and in South Africa are the same, are of the same value. Yeah. Hallelujah. So don't be misled when you are there. There is a distinction, a clear distinction between uh, the Mount Zion in Jerusalem and the new Mount Zion. Even as there is a clear distinction between the current Israel. Hallelujah. And the Israel in the Old Testament. You must always make a distinction. Don't fail to make a distinction. Uh, because when Jesus came, who handed Jesus to the Roman uh, soldiers to be crucified? It was the Jews. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Who uh, actually uh, ridiculed Paul? It was the Jews. Yeah, so when you see a Jew today, whether in Jerusalem, whether in Canada, remember, in the New Testament, there is no Jew, there is no Greek, no free, no slave. All of us need to be saved through the blood of Jesus. They also need the blood of Jesus. And the blood of the Jews now is not better than the blood of the Palestinians. Yes. Both are created yes. in God's image. Yes. So we know that uh, when we talk about the blood that speak better things, we are talking about the new covenant. Yes. We are in the new covenant. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. But he also talks about this uh, new um, Mount Zion as the city of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Tomorrow we will be celebrating the resurrection of uh, the Lord Jesus. We will all be uh, shouting and say, He is alive. There is the one grave in Jerusalem. It lies empty because He is alive. Hallelujah. And he also refers to this Jerusalem as the heavenly Jerusalem. He says you've come to heavenly Jerusalem. But in this Jerusalem, you don't only have human beings milling around. He says that you have also come to the place where innumerable angels come to celebrate Hallelujah. The angels are there celebrating. But it is not only the angels. He said, fourthly, you've come to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven and to the spirit of the righteous made perfect. In other words, that is us. Hallelujah. Who have been born through the blood of uh, Jesus. And he says, you have also come to God. 
Hallelujah. The church of all. And you've come also to Jesus. The mediator of a new covenant. And finally, he then said, And to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. To which I will now focus. Hallelujah. When this text makes a comparison between the blood of Jesus and the blood of Abel. We must uh, bear in mind that Abel's blood had a message of vengeance. It had a message of retaliation. When um, God judged Cain in Genesis 4 verses 12 to number 12 to verse number 12 we read and the Lord said that is to Cain what have you done the voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground and now you are cursed mark those words this blood is a blood of vengeance this blood is a blood of retaliation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, it says again and now you are cursed. And uh, because the ground has opened its mouth to re receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on earth. Hallelujah. Amen. In other words, there is no blessing uh, in the voice of the blood of Abel. Amen. So, this blood speaks better things than the blood of Abel and uh, than the blood of uh, animals and all of us. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me now hasten to say, what is it that this blood is speaking about. What better things are spoken by the blood of Jesus, which was shed yesterday when uh, we were commemorating the death of uh, our Lord Jesus. It speaks better things because it talks to access to the most holy place. You see, on Mount Zion or Mount uh, Sion, where the children of Israel came, there was no access to the close proximity with God. But the blood of Jesus opened uh, the door. That is why in this very same episode, Hebrews 10 verse 19 we read. And so dear brothers and sisters. We can boldly enter heaven's most holy place. Because of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Makes our accessibility to God's presence possible. Hallelujah. That is why. It speaks better things. Amen. Secondly, it speaks better things. Because the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross, Amen. it speaks of forgiveness of sins. It speaks of forgiveness of sins. David, when uh, he was um, repenting before God, said... I was born in sin. My mother conceived me in iniquity. He cried out to the Lord, brought out my sin. Don't take away your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. But there was nothing that he could do. But the blood of Jesus is able to forgive the worst sinner Hallelujah. on earth. You know, in this world, there are people that are difficult to be forgiven. 
uh, people that are difficult to be forgiven. But the blood of Jesus can even forgive Hitler. Uh, did you know that? Uh, it's so powerful. Hallelujah. It is there to offer forgiveness to you and me as we approach it. Hallelujah. In Matthew 26 and verse number 28, the Bible says, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. It is not only poured out for a few, but for many for the forgiveness of sins. As you are sitting around here, you know that there is this big possibility. Your sins can be forgiven. Those that are listening from the virtual platform, maybe you do not know Jesus, but the blood of Jesus speaks better things. Even if your family will not forgive you, even if your community will not forgive you, even if the 8 billion people uh, inhabiting this world will never forgive you. But the blood of Jesus says you are the best candidate for the forgiveness of God. This blood of Jesus is able to forgive the worst sinner. And for this reason, it speaks much better things. And thirdly, this blood of Jesus ushers us into new covenant. Into new covenant. In the Old Testament, we are in the Old Covenant. But in the New Testament, when the blood of Jesus was shed, we began to sing a song. We were foreigners. Hallelujah. We were strangers. Yes. But now, through the blood of Jesus, we are the children. We are no more strangers. Hallelujah. We are the sons, even the daughters of God. Hallelujah. So we are in the new covenant. This blood of Jesus made the new covenant possible. Again, when Paul speaks to Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 25, he said, in the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Never lose your position in the new covenant. Hallelujah. In this new covenant, sins are forgiven. In this new covenant, we have an open door to the presence of God, irrespective of who we are. Hallelujah. But uh, number four, the blood of Jesus Christ speaks better things because it does not speak retaliation, but it speaks reconciliation. It is my prayer that even as I am speaking today, that those brothers and sisters who are not in unity, those brothers and sisters who are not in harmony, with one another, they will hear the clarion of my call. The blood of Jesus speaks reconciliation. This is what the Apostle Paul said to the Colossians. In, first, in Colossians chapter 1 verse 20, when he said, And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth, or things in heaven by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. That blood makes 
reconciliation. Hallelujah. That blood brought us in. And not just as people of God, but as children of God. Not just as children of God, but as co-heirs with Jesus Christ. When we come through this blood, we are reconciled with God. You and I no longer need to kill goats and sheep. Uh, we need to spare the lives even of birds. You know people in the Old Testament. They would sin. And then they would go and kill a sheep which has not sin. The sheep that has that had not sin will, will, will shed the blood. They will chase a bird. And and, 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 and and just swindle and kill it for their own sin. Can you imagine? You sin. And uh, yeah, in a way, that was cruelty. Yeah, so the blood of Jesus also set animals free. Uh, because uh, God had not created animals to die for our sins. Yes, to give us proteins to eat, that is fine. But uh, now, today, the blood of Jesus is there to reconcile everything. And number five, the blood of Jesus speaks redemption. The blood of Jesus speaks redemption. Now, in 1 Peter 1, verse 18 and 19, Peter writes, and he says, For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of, Jesus, of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect, and in Ephesians 1 verse 7, we read, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of uh, his grace. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus <clears throat> brings redemption. Just before Jesus said the last word or the last statement yeah. on the cross before Jesus said into your hands I give my spirit yes. he said it is finished yeah. hallelujah yeah. if you read in John 19 verse 30 Jesus said it is finished it comes from a Greek word, tetelestai. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. When they use that word, it means it has been fully paid. In other words, you owe nothing more. It has been fully paid. But you see, it is this blood that uh, paid the debt that I and you owed and the debt that I and you couldn't pay. But the blood of Jesus paid it all and it was the redemption price for you and me. It is the blood of Jesus that makes redemption free. When Jesus said it is finished, he simply meant there is nothing that can be added to it. When you have come under the blood of Jesus, it has been paid. He has paid all of uh, your sins. And of course, uh, finally, the blood of Jesus speaks of victory. Hallelujah. This blood speaks better things Hallelujah. because it speaks of victory. It doesn't speak of, speak of uh, failure or defeat. In Revelation 12, verse 11, the Bible says, And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb 
and by the word of their testimony. For they left not their lives even unto death. So through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are victorious. So when uh, we have the blood of Jesus, we can sing and say, Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, victory is ours. That is why in our text we read, this blood speaks better things. Let me conclude by making just one appeal. And this appeal, let each and every one of us ensure that we are beneficiaries of this blood that speaks better things. You become a beneficiary by coming to the Lord Jesus and say, I believe your blood was also shed for me. I am giving my life to you. Let your blood cleanse me from all my sins. Hallelujah. I surrender my life into your hands, Lord Jesus. Let the blood that was shed on Calvary also wash my sins so that I am as pure and as white as the snow. The blood of Jesus Christ is able to do all these things that are better Hallelujah. as long as you become a beneficiary. Amen. As long as you say, I am coming under the blood. Hallelujah. It is only when you do that that then your destiny goes beyond the grave. You know that when you die, you don't end up in the grave. It doesn't matter whether those that bury you will say, ash to ashes, uh, dust to dust. You are the daughter of God. You are the son of God. You will never be ash. You will never be dust. Because your destination is um, the new Mount Zion where the living God is. It is the new Mount Zion which is in heaven. It is the new Mount Zion where you've got innumerable angels that are in a festive mood. It is in the new heaven where we will meet all those that have accepted Jesus as their Lord and uh, Savior. It is in the presence of God. Even in 2024, the blood of Jesus is not silent. It is still speaking much better things. Let's close our eyes. Hallelujah. 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 Heavenly Father, our Daddy, we want to thank you for your word this afternoon. It might have been silent on that day that succeeded the crucifixion of your Son and our Savior. But the blood was not silent. It had already been shed. And it continues to speak. Thank you, Father, that it speaks better things. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that this message will lead many to recommit to Jesus Christ. That it will make many to recommit to following Jesus. But above all, that uh, those that have not yet accepted you as Savior and Lord will come and say, please forgive me my sin. I repent. Let your blood wash me. Let it redeem me. Thank you, Father, for when we receive uh, this blood on our lives, we know 
all the debt is paid. Bless this word in our hearts. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.